Washington, the auto industry and Senate Republicans, as well as some Democrats, are up in arms over President Donald Trump's trade policy. The Senate Finance Committee held a hearing on Wednesday that saw members of the president's own party excoriate taxes already placed on steel and aluminum imports and those proposed by the Republican administration for imported autos and auto supplies. The Tax Foundation estimates that auto tariffs could result in a $73 billion tax increase on American consumers and businesses, said Sen. Orrin Hatch, R. Utah, the committee's chairman. The Peterson Institute calculates that auto tariffs could cause 195,000 workers to lose their jobs, and that's before other countries retaliate, which could put over 600,000 U.S. jobs at risk. These tariffs could cost the U.S. Auto industry up to 2 million lost vehicle sales annually. The Trump administration put tariffs on steel and aluminum months ago, saying they were needed to protect national security and save U.S. jobs. Now, his Commerce Department is looking at a similar tax on autos and auto parts that would increase the cost of making autos in the U.S., but could also potentially force some suppliers and manufacturers back into the country. At Wednesday's hearing, several witnesses, including the head of a major supplier, the executive vice president of Honda North America and a car dealer in Kentucky, decried the tariffs, noting that tariffs on imports have already led domestic steel prices to rise significantly, forcing up the prices of cars, and tightening a market that was already seeing sales slow. Additional tariffs, they said, will only force costs higher and slow the market more in years to come. The auto industry is not seeking protections, said Honda's Rick Shostek, in noting that no auto company in the U.S., including General Motors, Ford and Fiat Chrysler, supports the proposed tariffs. He said more than 90% of his company's vehicles sold in the U.S. or made in North America, he also noted that tariffs already in place are hurting business, as China retaliates on transmissions his company makes in the U.S. and sells in that country and Canada retaliates on American-made lawnmowers exported there. The U.S., he added, is going through a fundamental change in the philosophy of open markets and it's a change that threatens our competitiveness, Steve Gates, an auto dealer in Richmond, Kentucky, said he has no doubt that the tariffs will raise monthly payments on car purchases significantly, possibly more than $100 in many instances. Everybody who buys a car cares about the payment, he said. I think it's devastating. I don't think I can survive long term if this occurs, it wasn't all voice as opposed to tariffs. However, Josh Nasser, legislative director of the United Auto Workers, noted that manufacturing jobs have left the nation as companies chase lower wage workers elsewhere. But while saying that tariffs can be an appropriate tool to keep jobs in the U.S., he said it's equally important that labor protections be implemented and that trade deals include measures that insist on collective bargaining rights for workers. In other nations as well, tariffs aren't a comprehensive strategy in themselves, he said, adding that the UAW is keeping an open mind until it sees what the president proposes. We want to export our products, not our jobs, said U.S. Senator Debbie Stabenow, D. Mish, a member of the committee. That requires a level playing field. For more on this story. Except the UAW, groups rip Trump's proposed auto tariffs at hearing ghetto makers to Trump, higher tariffs would affect consumers, jobs. Some Democrats raised concerns as well, Stabino and some other Democrats on the committee, notably U.S. Sen. Sherrod Brown, D. Ohio, who panned General Motors plans to cut a shift at the Lordstown plant and begin new production in Mexico, argued that workers' rights and jobs need to be considered and actions taken to enforce rules against currency manipulation and theft of intellectual property when writing trade deals. But other Democrats, while agreeing with their colleagues on those issues, more vocally complained of Trump's plans. Sen. Mark Warner, DVA, raised concerns that the real hit to the pocketbook may come when you go back to service your car, if the push to increase tariffs continues, since it will raise the price of replacement parts. Will also, said the witnesses, increase the cost of car insurance, since maintenance and repair costs will go up. The witnesses noted that while the number of cars made in the U.S. and sold in the U.S., 
may differ from company to company. Every auto manufacturer in the country uses imported parts and supplies at some level, and the costs will go up of making every vehicle since U.S. Suppliers will also be able to raise costs and still remain competitive. They also noted that Trump's trade policy has thrown the industry in turmoil because of the uncertainty of what's coming next, be it auto tariffs or a conclusion to the up-in-the-air fate of the North American Free Trade Agreement. Senator Ron Wyden of Oregon, the committee's top-ranking Democrat, said what the U.S. This is not the turmoil being created by Trump's trade policy but a program that helps meet workers' needs while not raising taxes on consumers. The president believes he has the authority to impose auto tariffs because the Congress gave it to him, Wyden said. I want to put the administration on notice that under the Constitution, it's the Congress which is in charge of trade and in charge of tariffs. Dot dot dot. Perhaps it's time for the Congress to consider reclaiming this authority. Contact Todd Spangler at 703-854-8947 or at tspangler at freepress.com. Follow him on Twitter at at Spangler. Read or share this story, https colon slash slash on dot freep.com slash to new arv.